In this session, we're going to talk about Nerdio for Azure and specifically address the topic of Office 365 and identity. The distinction between in-cloud and Active Directory synced users, Azure AD Connect, the tool used to sync Active Directory with Azure Active Directory, and the different methods to ensure the users have the same password and identity information both on-premises and in Azure. Enjoy the session. Today we are going to talk, uh, going to continue talking about Office 365 and specifically identity uh, in Azure AD. So the term identity, for those of you who don't know, is, is what Microsoft uses to refer to, you know, kind of everything that has to do with Active Directory, specifically Azure Active Directory, and how everything integrates together. Right, the identity is what underpins all the other Microsoft Cloud services with Office 365 being one of them, and that's what we're going to discuss today. So uh, we talked about last week kind of this distinction between user objects uh, in the Active Directory, in the Azure Active Directory uh, tenant, let's call it, and you know things like mailboxes or other services that those users get assigned to or get assigned to those users, right? So those are uh, distinct uh, objects. Users uh, are the things that, you know, have the contact information, uh, the password, the username associated with them, and then mailboxes and, and uh, you know, uh, SharePoint repositories and things like that uh, get attached to those user objects. So today we're going to talk about the distinction between in-cloud and Active Directory synced users. And then we're going to spend some time talking about Azure AD Connect, which is the tool that is used to synchronize Active Directory with Azure Active Directory and the different methods of uh, making sure that users have the same password information and the same identity information in both in the on-prem environment or in RDS environment in the case of Nerdio and their Azure AD based environment. So I'm going to switch over and just give you a, an example of what I mean by in cloud versus synced with Active Directory users. So here we're just looking at the list of users. This is how you would see it through the Office 365 admin portal. If you were to open this in the Azure uh, admin portal and go to Active Directory, you'll see the same set of objects, but they would be presented a little bit differently. So let's look at it from this more common view. So what you can see here is you can see the, the display name and the username, also known as the, the uh, principal name of the user, where you have you know, the, the first part of it at a particular domain.com. You then see the status in terms of licensing of that particular object. So in this case, you know, this user object is unlicensed and this user object has an E3 license assigned to it. And then in this column, which I believe only appears when you have uh, AD Connect uh, or Azure uh, Active Direct, AD Connect enabled, this, this shows up only then I believe. So what you can see is you have two types of users. You have synced with Active Directory and you have in-cloud. We click on an in-cloud user. You'll notice that I will have the ability to change. I'm obviously not going to do that, but I do have the ability to change this user's username as well as the domain portion of the username. I can also change things like uh, group membership. For instance, I can go in here and I can add the user to other groups. Okay, that is because this user is an in-cloud. It has been created and is being managed natively in Azure AD. In contrast, if we looked at a user that is synced with, uh, with Active Directory, that means you know, the, the primary object uh, that this, this user object came from is in Active Directory. What you'll notice is I will not be able to make changes and I will have this kind of a message up here. I cannot change my domain. I cannot change my username. <clears throat> I won't be able to change group membership. And that is because this is a read only object and the read write uh, counterpart of this object exists in an active directory, which happens to be, you know, our active directory in, in Nerdio. Okay. So 
Now, why, why, why does this matter? The reason this matters is uh, you can, oh, one other thing to show you is you can assign licenses, product licenses, to both in cloud and synced users, right? That's how, that's how you would assign a license to this user object, which is a, a synced with Active Directory object. So what often happens is when a, uh, when a customer initially sets up Office 365, users are manually added in. They're added into the Office 365 you know, portal, either through a CSV file or manually by doing add user. They start out as a native in-cloud users. And then at some point later on, the customer may decide, hey, I have this existing Active Directory where those same user objects exist already. They have group membership. They already have their own existing passwords. I don't want to be maintaining two separate directories and I want to merge the two together. So what happens at that point is you enable uh, active directory synchronization. Um, again, they keep moving this around. So it's, you know, it's somewhere over here under settings. I'm sure uh, there is a way to enable uh, there's a way to enable directory synchronization or, or also known as AD Connect synchronization. Then you install the AD Connect tool on an existing server that has access to the Active Directory forest where the user object exists. And then what happens is when you trigger a synchronization, what it's going to do is it's going to look at the user objects that are in an existing Active Directory and if it can match them precisely with the same username and you know, email address to an existing in-cloud user, it will basically overwrite all the properties of the in-cloud user with the properties of an Active Directory user, keeping the license assignment the same. And the way that this works on the back end, there is a, uh, there is a, a, a value associated with each user account in Azure AD called the mutable ID. And it's a unique, it's a globally unique ID which gets calculated from the Active Directory global user ID. And if those two match, meaning if there is a global user ID where if you convert that to an, an immutable ID, that immutable ID exists within Azure Active Directory, then it knows that those two objects belong together and any changes made to the source, which is an Active Directory, will be then replicated over to the destination, which is going to be the Azure AD object. And then the Azure AD object can no longer be edited inside of Office 365 or the Azure AD management tools. So that is, soft deleting an object, hard deleting an object, meaning once the object is in the deleted users uh, section, you can go in and permanently delete it. When you permanently delete it, it, it leaves the environment and then, then it can be, you know, sort of, you can sync again. So the way to clear up any conflicts that result from deleted user objects is, is just to permanently delete those, also known as a hard delete. Now, what happens when you delete a user object? When you delete a user object, it goes into deleted users and any associated services uh, go into sort of this disconnected state. So similar to how Exchange used to work or how it still works. When you delete the user object, the mailbox still exists and then there is a policy that after X number of days, that mailbox will be deleted as well. So I think the default is 30 days. So if you were to delete a user, that has a mailbox, then that mailbox will be around for 30 more days. And if you restore the user, it will get reattached to that user object. But if you don't restore the user within 30 days, then the user object will get deleted permanently. And also the mailbox, SharePoint, OneDrive, all of those services will also eventually get deleted as well. So within 30 days, there is a recovery window. After 30 days, it's gone. So uh, we basically covered, you know, in cloud versus directory sync. Where, where does this come into play? And, and this comes into play quite often when you're migrating users from one environment to, to another, especially in Nervio. So think of the following few scenarios. Scenario number one, you have a customer 
that already has an Office 365 deployment, which most new customers do. Uh, and now you want to set them up in Nerdio and you want to use uh, the Nerdio, you know, either RDS or, or VDI or what have you, which means you need an Active Directory deployment and you need the two to be connected together and synchronizing with each other. So once you deploy a Nerdio environment and you plug it into an existing Office 365 environment and you try to add a user into Nerdio that has the same username or email address as a user that already exists in Azure AD, by default, Nerdio will validate that um, the username is unique. And if it's not unique, it's going to error out. So if you look under extended attributes here, you can see by default, this checkbox is checked. This what basically what this does is it checks if the email address is unique or if it exists in Azure AD already. If it exists, you won't be able to create it. Why? Because even if you do create it, there is going to be a synchronization that's going to happen. And because it exists locally and it exists remotely, one of two things will happen. Either the synchronization won't work because they are you know, overlapping in some way and conflicting, or what's going to happen is the local object will match, will soft match or SMTP match with the Azure AD object and take over all of those properties. So imagine what's gonna happen if you have, let's say a, a user at the customer that is logging into their mailbox and they're members of certain security and distribution lists. And now you've added that user account into Nerdio uh, and you uncheck this box and the synchronization process runs and, and matches those two objects. Now you have a user object that is being controlled by the Active Directory Nerdio overriding the properties of the user object that's an active in, in Azure AD. So the mailbox will still be there. It's not gonna erase the data, but the group membership will change. And most importantly, the password will be different because the password is, is coming from Active Directory and is overriding what's an Azure Active Directory through something called password hash sync. So the user who's using the mailbox will no longer be able to access the mailbox because the password has changed, right? So in some scenarios, this may be desired behavior, but in most scenarios, this is something that would be unexpected, which is why this is the default checkbox that will cause it to error out, okay? Now, the correct way to do this in Nerdio, if you already have user objects that are in cloud, meaning they're native, Office 365 objects that were created in, in Office 365, they will appear in this section right here, this man that's called Manage Azure, Other Azure AD Users. And each of these objects will have an import button. And when you do the import button, the NAP will actually enumerate all the user properties, uh, all the group memberships, all the additional email aliases. And when it creates this user object in Azure AD, I'm sorry, in, in Nerdio AD, it will copy all of those settings over. So when the synchronization does run, it's still going to mer merge the two objects together and take over the object that's in cloud, but it's gonna have all the right properties, group memberships, email aliases, et cetera. And it will also set the password and warn the user who's doing the import that the password will be reset and here's gonna be the new password. So it's a much more controlled and you know, rigorous process rather than just creating a user object and then you know, things are just stop, stop working. Okay, so that's one type of a scenario, which is when a user, a customer comes in with an Office 365 deployment with in-cloud users. Another scenario is a user comes in and wants to do a Nerdio deployment and they already have synchronization that is running between their existing Active Directory and their Office 365 environment, which means they have users that are now synced with AD status. And users that are in synced in AD status, you can no longer sync to those users, which means the mailboxes that are associated with those users and other you know, services can't be assigned to the users in Nerdio, and the users in Nerdio will either not sync at all, or they can sync under other usernames, but they will be completely independent objects. So in order for that to work, in order to kind of get, get around that problem, 
first what you have to do is you have to, to, uh, to disable uh, synchronization of the existing environment. You basically break that synchronization and then you have to convert the existing users that are synced with the previous Active Directory into an in-cloud user. And there's you know, special method um, for doing that. And then once they have an in-cloud status, then you can do the same process as if you know, we're in scenario number one, they will appear in this list right here, and then you'll be able to import them either one at a time or in bulk. And, uh, and they will match with each other, and now you'll, you'll reset the password, but the group memberships and all of the mailboxes and, and data is gonna get retained. 